Hello, everybody. My name is Pi, and welcome to SR Lounge, where we're here to help you be a better photographer. And today, it's all about the Lightroom preset system. And this video is the primer video for those of you that have purchased the preset system. So this is the one video that you need to watch. We're going to walk you through the entire system, how it works, so that you guys can hit the ground running. And believe me, it's going to take less than 30 minutes. It's going to be well worth your time, and you're going to be able to use the preset system to get to any look within just a matter of seconds and a couple of clicks. For those that don't have the presets, we'll check out this video. You can see how it works and see if it's something that would work well inside of your workflow. So let's go ahead. I want to talk just from the top about the five major changes or major updates in the preset system. And basically what ended up happening was as I was updating the previous version, I ended up making so many changes based on what I wanted that I kind of realized that the preset system needed a complete overhaul. So number one, We've added a completely new section of mixologies, including 25 of our own internal linen Gersa mixologies for both color, black and white, so modern color and black and white, as well as filmic color and filmic black and white effects. They're absolutely fantastic. We're going to walk through those. Number two, I completely changed and revamped the framework. So we simplified the framework by reducing and removing the whole soft versus vivid thing and making it one single framework, making it easier to use, but also more powerful at the same time. And believe me, that is possible. Number three, we have a completely revamped curve system. So not only have we revamped each curve to make sure that the tonality is even better, we've also added two additional sections of curves, which we're gonna show you. Number four is we have new and refined brushes for retouching and for advanced effects and so forth. And number five, what was number five? Number five, oh yeah, we have new color toning, guys. We have filmic color toning, which we've included, and we've also refined the previous color toning as well. We've also thrown in a couple extra tools and tips, but I'm not counting those. Those are just bonuses. So let's start from the top with number one. We're gonna go over the mixologies that we've included, and we'll let you guys play with these, but let's show you. So I'm gonna go into mixologies right here. And uh, I have a lovely little image pulled up here, and I'm really excited to show you all the new film effects because one of the requests that we've gotten the most is how to create these pastel Fuji 400H Kodak Portra, those pastel film looks. And in the past, it was very kind of difficult to get there. We've made it incredibly simple. So we've built that into this new system. So check this out. We have LJP Color Film. These are all one-click presets. These are the ones that we use in the studio to get to any one of these final looks. So you don't really need to do anything beyond these, but if you want to customize them, you can. We'll get into how to build mixologies in just a little bit. So let's go to our, let's do Fuji 400H. I'm going to click on Fuji 400H. All we have to do now is just simply adjust our exposure. I'm going to bring my exposure up. And you know, I always shoot things more on the warm side. So I find that when I want to go for a filmic look, I'm generally cooling things down a little bit. So with just a little bit of an exposure and temperature tint adjustment, we have our pastel color look. And look at this. It looks absolutely beautiful. We have those nice kind of warm, uh, well, very uh, bright skin tones, which is very flattering. And if we want more of the color, we can switch this over to vivid color instead of kind of that more you know, toned down look. So this is a more vivid color look. This is the standard Fuji 400H look. We also have Portrait 800 and the vivid version of Portrait 800. And really these are more based around Portrait 400 and 800, but I just kind of kept it simple. You know, all of this is my interpretation of film. I feel like it's kind of silly to say that this is the way film is because film always looks different in every situation, in every environment. The best thing that I wanted to do was create a version of Fuji 400 that I like and so that's what these are. So I think this looks gorgeous. So I'm gonna just tone this down a little bit more. And we have this beautiful kind of bright and airy look to the image and it looks fantastic. Let's apply this to another image. I'm gonna go over here. This is Paul Von Ritter. Paul Von Ritter is one of my uh, great friends and he's a fantastic photographer. So be sure to look up his work. This is one of his shots and uh, I thought it was gorgeous, not only from the pose and the expression, but Paul shoots with this filmic style and it, and it just lends itself so well to these kind of looks. So I'm gonna select, uh, let's go ahead and do the 400H. And what I'm gonna do on this image is just, I actually love the way it looks right there. I'm gonna brighten it up though and just leave it right there. I'm gonna create a virtual copy just so you can see the differences in some of these. So let's do a vivid color. And I'm gonna to tone down the temperature a little bit. Let's do a Portra 800 HDR fade. And what that's gonna do is gonna keep some of the dynamic range to the image, but it's also gonna give a little bit of a wash to it. 
That looks really nice. Let's also do some of these uh, Ilfords. Let's do a black and white. Let's do that high contrast black and white. And you'll notice with each of these, it adds this beautiful little bit of, uh, let me actually go to the previous one. I'm gonna zoom in on the previous one. You can see that I made my version of these presets add a very soft and subtle amount of grain where it doesn't really look like grain. What we're doing is actually de-sharpening via our sharpening settings, and then we're adding a subtle amount of grain to reduce that digital effect. I feel like that digital high definition look is what is a dead giveaway for uh, you know whether you shot it on a DSLR or an actual film camera. I love the way that looks. That looks absolutely gorgeous. That's the HP5 high contrast. We have an HP5 lifted fade, which I'm gonna do that one next. Just so you guys have an idea of what all these things do and, and how they work. So look at this. In just a matter of moments, we have several different versions of this of this beautiful image, and every one of them look gorgeous. And I, I love how the tonality and everything works on this. I don't want to give myself a pat on the back, but I'm just going to give myself a pat on the back. Well, okay. So that's the filmic uh, mixologies. Now, for those of you that love, like, you know, the traditional LGP style, LGP has broken into two styles as of late. Um, one is a more... Uh, traditional style, which is kind of our vivid color, HDR, that kind of look. And we've also adopted a new filmic look because we have a lot of clients asking for that. So when they come into the studio, we actually ask them which look they like and we shoot based off their mood board to create one of those styles. So let's work in the LGP color style. So I'm going to go to, uh, for this image, let's go to our, what I would typically do, which is a natural HDR. And all I'm going to do from here is just back off the temperature a little bit, okay? And right there, one click and a temperature adjustment. And look, we get to this beautiful image. Looks gorgeous. I'm gonna add a little radial burn. So let's just pull up a 0.5 burn from the retouching and just put that in there. And this looks absolutely awesome. I'm done. I don't have to do anything to that image now. Let's go back to uh, and select another image. For this one, I wanna create, let's say we wanna go for a more super high contrast vivid look. You know, like, like there's a lot of photographers that are really popular and they're doing a lot of these uh, very, very high contrast kind of HDR looks. So I'm just going to correct this up. I don't want to update my Apple stuff. Not right now. Don't you know I'm recording? So let's go to HDR vivid color. I wouldn't use the vivid color when it's a close up shot just because it can go nuclear on skin tones, but we do have a fix for that. But this looks fantastic. Now I'm going to make a little tweak here and I'm going to show you how to do this later on, but I'm going to go into definition. And this is basically, if you are familiar with the previous version, we had soft versus vivid. Definition is now what you use to define that. So I'm going to go and harden up the image a little bit so we have more mid-tone contrast and mid-tone definition. And then let's see here. I'm going to go and do uh, a little bit of extra sharpening on this. and I, I would call that pretty good. But I want to give you a little taste of some of these uh, brushes. And again, we're going to have tons of mixologies and tutorials on this. So you don't need to learn it all at once. But I'm going to choose this highlight bloom. What this is going to do is it's going to target highlights while letting shadows remain where they're at. And it gives it a very, like beautiful boost in overall kind of contrast and it looks fantastic and you can drop it over the sky as well and it's going to kind of brighten that up too which I might do there uh, but what I'm going to do also is just grab a little uh, graduate filter brush and just pull this down and we're going to go with a negative 0.5 burn right here oops that was a negative one let's go with a negative 0.5 and this looks gorgeous and look at this we have this beautiful super high contrast, dynamic range, high everything. Just punchy image. And we can, if we want to, tone up the uh, the warmth of it to kind of give it like a little extra kick there. I love that, it looks fantastic, okay? So, little taste of the brushes as well. Let's show you some of the other additions. We have this, um, we have a, a beautiful new uh, preset that I've added in there called Glam. What this is designed for is you know, a, a lot of images like say newborns and boudoir and fine art type stuff and that kind of stuff really can benefit from a kind of boost where it kind of blows out the highlights a little bit, kind of lets the highlights bloom while retaining contrast. And that's exactly what the glam effect does. So if we go to the signature color, you can see signature color has a really nice look to it already. But glam color, it, it kind of gives it this highlight bloom and while retaining contrast and everything. So when we just tone it down a little bit in terms of the temperature, we get this beautiful look. Look at that one click, and we're already this. Now all I'm gonna do now is use my tool to add a profile correction, and just adjust the exposure down a little bit because that Sigma has so much vignetting when we do that profile correction, it really adjusts the exposure quite a bit. But look at the before and after on that. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna go and apply this to another image, so check this one out. Do the same thing we're gonna do. So here's like a vivid color, right? 
looks vivid color looks beautiful over like environmental portraits and I even like label so you'll see next to these close up newborn environmental portrait these are the typical situations that I like to use these types of effects in so soft color would typically be my go-to for this type of image and I'd brighten it up but glam color is gonna just give it this rich boost in in kind of highlights and tonality which looks fantastic over skin it looks absolutely beautiful I'm gonna pull a graduate filter with a one-stop dodge from the bottom right of this just to kind of brighten up her body a little bit and by the way we've simplified the brushes and refined them a little bit too so that way when you use alt or option to click on a pin you can move it right or left right is gonna strengthen and to the left is going to reduce the strength of that uh, uh, preset so everything has been adjusted so that basically you can incrementally dial up and dial down one of everybody's biggest requests was how do we adjust opacity well in Lightroom we don't have that option in Photoshop we do but in Lightroom we don't but with that pin option we can adjust the strength now with the new refined presets this is another great image to kind of show you guys the difference between like a black crush so here's a black crush which we would use to kind of keep a lot of blacks and depth in the image and we brighten it up you know so we have this beautiful kind of sun flare but high contrast look to the image but look at what this uh, glam color does you can see it you can really see it in the in the highlights as they kind of bloom in this image and it looks gorgeous and I love this kind of low-key version of that image also we have of course like if when it comes to newborns when it comes to anything like this you know you can use really any of these but we all the LGB color I'm gonna show you some of the black and whites actually I didn't even show you guys those so soft black and white for say newborns if you want to keep it more on the soft side or a vivid black and white which is probably what I would use in this circumstance um, we also have black crushes for when you have flares and so forth let me do one thing here I want to just show off something a little bit let's try one thing I'm gonna either do glam color on this one or if it's too much I actually do like that glam color looks fabulous on this image fabulous what we're gonna do also is I'm gonna go into my brushes and let's use one of our new brushes our Sun flare plus now I have direction of light in this image and you know what let's use the graduate filter instead so I'm just gonna use that I have direction of light here but I don't have a flare but let's say I want one well now there's a brush that we can just pull in our flare and essentially we're just gonna drag it back to the point that we want and then with the new uh, graduate filter in Lightroom CC we can select this brush and holding down option or alt if you're on a PC option if you're on a Mac you can adjust your flow up and down and we're gonna just erase out the effect where we essentially don't want it or basically where we just kind of customize this little flare here okay so boom I like it okay so now what we've done here is we've added this flare look at this we've added this beautiful little flare coming in from the right and it looks just as if it was shot that way in camera that's the before and after within just a couple clicks here gorgeous okay so that was the mixologies let's move on to number two which is the refined framework okay so what I'm gonna do is select this image now from previous users you'll notice that we previously had a soft and a vivid category and if you're a new user basically these were soft versions or more vivid versions of the same preset and it created a lot of duplications and it was kind of unneeded because some people like their images more soft some people like their images more defined and harder and grittier but it didn't merit having duplications of everything so we removed that and instead we've changed the framework a little bit so the new framework is starting basically with a foundation stylizing that foundation preset modifying your base tones and then modifying the definition of that overall effect and when we talk about the preset system the power in the preset system is it's a system to create presets a system to get to any different look within just a couple clicks and also of being creative and testing out different looks in a very quick and efficient manner and so you're gonna see that as we start working through here it's not only gonna be it'll open up creative possibilities but for us who we always have new producers coming to the studio it really opens up possibilities to put at their fingertips when they're just starting out inside of Lightroom so you don't even have to really know Lightroom this is gonna help you to become a better post producer simply by understanding the framework itself so the way that this is designed is to work in a layered approach just like how we would work inside of Photoshop we would layer one effect on top of another so a foundation preset is gonna dial in all of your basic settings stylization is gonna be your first step in kind of customizing the overall look and style of that effect and then we're gonna tweak that look with our base tones and then finally dial in our final definition settings to kind of modify so what I'm gonna do here is I already have a mixology that's created that's gonna get us to the final look okay it's HDR vivid color so if we select that it's gonna get us essentially to exactly where we're gonna go and you can see in one click that's already done for you and it looks absolutely amazing but let's do this on our own 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create that mixology now. So I'm gonna start by saying, well, for my color, I want dramatic color for this image, okay? I want dramatic color coming from the camera. So I'm gonna select that. Stylization, I can choose to modify my curve. So I can, I can choose to, and the way that these curves work is the first word describes what it's gonna do over the exposure. The second word describes its effect over contrast. So in these quick curves, a bright wash is gonna brighten and then wash out the contrast. So it'll brighten exposure, wash out the image. A bright matte will brighten, but then put a matte finish on the image. So it's gonna matte, which is basically like a subtle fade. Neutral wash, which is gonna keep our exposure the same, but wash out the image. Neutral punch, which again is gonna leave the exposure, but punch up contrast. Neutral matte, so forth. Now neutral punch is, or actually, sorry, the dark washes are gonna darken and wash out. Dark matte is gonna darken and leave a subtle fade. Neutral punch is standard in all the foundation presets, but if you want to modify that, you can. I'm going to leave that where it's at. And for right now, let's skip over the lens edge softening, which is also now in stylization as well. What we're going to do now with base tones is what I want to do with this image is bring back my dynamic range. I want my shadows to be boosted. I want my highlights to come down. So I'm going to go to HDR and I can just step up the level of dynamic range that I want with every one of these clicks. Okay. So if I decide that HDR++ isn't enough, I go to++++. Plus plus plus. So I'm gonna click all the way, so my, my, my dynamic range is all the way boosted. That's fantastic. Only problem is now the definition of the image is a little bit flat, and that's what this new section is. Let's say that I wanna add more, kind of that mid-tone contrast, mid-tone definition. That's basically done in clarity. I can choose to soften if we're working on portraits, or I can choose to harden if we want a more vivid portrait or if we're working on landscapes. I'm gonna to choose to harden it, and I can choose, again, different steps and different levels here. Okay, now I'm familiar with the preset system, so I know where I wanna go with it. So I, I don't really need to click multiple times. I just wanna demonstrate how you can click and reduce the effect or increase the effect. On top of this, I wanna boost my contrast. So let's go up and just step this up to different levels of contrast and see what we like. And I love that right there, it looks fantastic. Now, this looks great. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is just sharpen up the image a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in and I can choose different levels of sharpening. I'm just gonna go ahead and do sharpen plus plus because for a landscape, I want a little bit of extra sharpening to it. This is that same essentially mixology that we chose to import, but this is where we define if we wanted something to be vivid or if we wanted it to be soft. And so rather than duplicating the presets like we did before, now you can have specific control over the overall mid-tone contrast and shadow detail and so forth, uh, and or the sharpening and everything. Now let's say that, you know, for this image, I would like to do one thing. I'd like to add in my profile correction. So in tools, we have the option to add profile correction. I'm going to do that. And now I love this pre preset. I've created my own custom mixology, and I want to save this out. So I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to save this to a mixology right here. I'm going to click on plus. What I'll do is I'll add a new category of preset. So I'm going to just add a new category, and we'll call this 15, and I'm going to call it pies. This is just a demonstration, landscape presets, okay? And we're gonna put this inside of the mixology. I'm gonna hit create, and I just create a new section right there, okay? So now inside that section, I'm gonna go 15A. This is Pies Vivid HDR. And I've already titled this is for landscapes. What we're gonna do is select all, and there's certain things that I would recommend deselecting when it comes to creating presets. One is white balance because typically white balance you'd adjust in camera and then tweak from image to image. There's generally not a single white balance that's gonna work for every single image unless you happen to shoot all of your images in the exact same scene. Number two is the exposure because again, we're gonna need to tweak exposure from image to image, so turn that off as well. I also like to turn off the graduate filter and the radial filter simply so that we don't s save any of these local adjustment filters inside of one of our presets, okay? So that wouldn't really make sense because again, those need to be adjusted on an image to image basis. What I'm gonna do here though, is I'm gonna deselect lens corrections, but I'm gonna save my lens profile and my chromatic aberration. Anything else I don't really need in there. And then I'm gonna leave everything else selected and hit press create. Now it drops in our new preset and now we create our own mixology. So look at this. Now we have that one click preset that has my specific needs for a landscape image. And there it is. So one click from this to this. But again, I did have a version of this saved. If you look right here, I have HDR Vivid Color. And if I click this, there's gonna be one little difference. Remember how I told you that these are our portrait, our wedding and portrait mixologies that we've included. That means that it's a bit softer. So when you compare that to the Vivid, it's gonna have less mid-tone contrast because those are designed for portraits as opposed to this one. 
We'll be coming out with more mixologies for fitness. We'll be sharing all those things. And again, to find those, let me just go ahead and pull this up real quick. I'm gonna go and just open up a new tab inside of Chrome. And you'll see under SR Lounge, there is a section right here for Lightroom recipes. So simply click there and you guys can not only see the recipes that I'm adding, you can also add your own recipes where you're adding in the before and the after photo and helping others to see how you got to certain looks. And we will have prizes and we'll have all sorts of features. And so we'd highly recommend you guys going and doing it because if you have an awesome image with a great recipe, we will feature it, we'll feature your work and everything. So it's completely worth doing. Okay, let's go back to our settings over here. So we understand the basic framework, okay? So we choose a foundation, we stylize. Let's go through just maybe one or two more examples of that. So I'm gonna select, um, for example, let's do this image right here. Okay, so with this image, let's say that we wanna go for a more, uh, let's just say a, a kind of a more high contrast look to it but with natural color. So I'm gonna choose natural color. I'm gonna add in skin desat for our uh, foundation preset. So that way it has a little bit of skin desaturation. Now, I wanna say I add a little matte in here. So I'm gonna put in a quick curve to add a neutral matte. This is another cool thing. We've put our lens edge softening up into stylization. So now you can go, I wanna add some softening around this with a radial softener. So I'm gonna go radial plus. You can press Shift M, or you can just simply click, uh, click on the radial filter tool and grab the pin that it just added and now just move it into place. So we're just gonna grab that pin and move it right over our subject. Each one of these is gonna add one, two, or three of these pins, or sometimes more of these pins. So you can kind of control, like if this is too much of a softening effect, I can go back to just a radial one and then just pull this where I want it to be and call it good. You'll also notice that the shapes of them actually vary so you get a really nice effect overall. Okay, so that's that. And now we've stylized it. Now what I need to do is kind of just adjust overall. I'm gonna just adjust my exposure up a little bit. And right now the image lacks a bit of overall contrast. So I can get contrast back by doing a levels boost. So if I do a levels boost, it's gonna brighten up the highlights while pulling down the shadows and I can click to see where I wanna go with that. Or if I just wanna crush the blacks, I can pull the blacks down just by simply crushing it and brighten up the overall image. Now I like the levels boost option because it leaves my highlights kind of nice and kind of bright and it looks gorgeous right there, okay? And from here we can go and define the definition if we don't like it. Like if we want a more soft image, we can soften it up further. If we want it to be more kind of on the hard side, like I know a lot of wedding photographers prefer their images to be more grungy kind of looking. I prefer it a little bit more on the soft side, that's just our style. But then you can also tweak like contrast if you wanna boost say contrast up and let's go to medium or say back it off to boost light. So now what we've done here is we've added a matte finish, we've tweaked contrast, we can add film grain if we want, we can desharpen, we can do all that and have a custom preset now. And really once you get familiarized with this, it's four clicks. It's choosing a foundation, stylizing, modifying base tones and definition. So three to four clicks and you can have a custom preset based on whatever you like. So that's how this overall framework for basic developing works. Now that we've gone over the basic framework, let's just show you a little bit of the advanced customization system or the ACS framework, which concludes of, concludes, no, it includes <laughs> adjustments for color toning. It includes our curves or the advanced curves and special effects. Now color toning is pretty straightforward. We can tweak our saturation, we can desaturate, we can saturate, or you can modify HSL. Keep in mind one thing, all of the HSL and black and white options do modify not only the HSL, but also camera calibration as well. The reason why is because everybody wanted filmic toning and to get to filmic toning, we had to use camera calibration to get there. So if that's something that you like advanced camera calibration type stuff and you like to tweak it, you're gonna need to take those out of the preset in certain cases. But for most of you, that really shouldn't ever be a concern. So let's say for this particular image, let's just skip over this. We don't really need to do, um, you know, all this is pretty self-explanatory. We'll also have additional videos on this kind of stuff, but let's talk about the curves because I think that's one area that really could use a little bit of extra uh, education on. Up above, we have stylization with quick curves, right? Over here, we have the advanced customization curves. Now, what that means is curves down here, these are the seven types of curves that we have. A bright wash, bright matte, neutral wash, neutral punch, and so forth. Down here we have those same curves, but they're divided based on color schema. So now you can actually modify the color within an image by simply selecting a different curve. So 
In the neutral colors, these are colors that aren't going to modify existing tones. And that's basically what the quick curves are. The quick curves are the exact same bright wash, bright matte, neutral wash. But also we have neutral color toning for cross-processing. So up here we selected a neutral matte, correct? We selected this little matte option. If we choose a neutral matte with cross-processing down here, it's going to retain the exact same tonality in terms of contrast and so forth, but now it adds cross-processing to our colors. If we choose a cool colored neutral matte, so if we go down here and choose teal, it's going to add green. So teal is green, azure is blue, violet is purple. Cool cross-processing is cross-processing that's cool bias, basically. So it's going to have a more cold tone to it. So we have specific control now over the processing of the image. If we want to have a more warm tone to it, we can choose a neutral matte with a warm tone. Anytime we adjust from the same type of matte just to a different color, it simply is adjusting the color tone and not the actual kind of quality to the contrast and so forth, okay? So this is a warm cross-process version. We can go back at any point in time. We can either select just a neutral matte up here, or we can choose one of the neutral color mats over here, the same thing. We also have the same thing, the black and white curves as well. So these are all black and white versions with different types of tone overlays. So a neutral matte with amber is gonna add a black and white with basically a little bit of yellow toning. So if I select that standard black and white, you'll see the amber adds a little bit of that yellow tone. Bronzing is a little more brown. Azure is more of a blue and cooled off tone. So you can have very specific options to customize each of these curve options within the advanced customization curves. Okay, what else do I wanna show you? Let's go to special effects. Under special effects, we have one additional layer of color control with split toning. With, I was like, a little, little bit of my German side kind of popped out right there. With a little bit of, no, that's like, is that German? I don't know. But anyway, with split toning, we can basically add additional levels of, say, color. So we can add yellows, and the first word defines the color going into the highlights. The second word is into the shadows. So yellow, violet, yellow in the highlights, violet in the shadows. And now we have another layer of color toning. Then we have special effects vignetting if you do desire vignetting effects. So we essentially have, with, with the preset system, we have one level of color control with temperature and tint, two with our tone curve, three with our HSL, we have four with split toning, and then we have camera calibration, which if you're using, like say, our filmic effects. So you have complete control over every single one of these options, and you can create your perfect version of Fuji 400H or your perfect version of dramatic HDR color. Let's go through and just do a couple other images. I'm gonna go through and uh, let's land on an actual, I'm gonna choose an actual effect that I would wanna keep on this image. So I'm gonna reset this all out by pressing Control Shift R. And what I'm gonna do is just start with a mixology and generally my mixologies get me where do what I wanna go because these are my specific styles. So what I'm gonna do with this one is just choose, uh, let's go with glam color because it's gonna have this nice blooming effect and I might do black crush just because it might reduce, this already has quite a bit of bloom. So I think I like that black crush because it has a little bit less bloom. And I like that, it looks great right there. All right, now let's go to this image. So let's see what we can do here with just one single click. I'm gonna go ahead and select HDR vivid color. This is far enough back that we can select this and I think it'll be fine. Okay, so there we go. And we're gonna go with a little profile correction just so we have that edge brightened up. Now I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit. And I'm noticing that the skin tones are still a little bit nuclear. Remember that we have all of the retouching tools. So we have detail enhancing, we have retouching with you know skin softening and so forth. They all work fantastically well, so try them out. What I'm gonna do here is just pull a little bit of that HDR effect out by using the unenhanced HDR skin. And then we're just gonna paint that over the skin. And we can be a little bit loosey-goosey with it. All right. That looks great. Now, remember once you've painted that in, you can hold down Alt or Option, click on that pin, and simply drag to the right to strengthen the pin or drag to the left to reduce the strength of that pin. So I'm just gonna pull this to the right so the skin tones are just a little bit less nuclear. Now, let's go ahead and select our uh, radial filter, and I'm gonna use a 0.5 burn. We're gonna just bring that around them. I love the look of that, okay? And you know what I might even do for this one? Actually, before we do that, let's go to our stylization. I'm just gonna drop in this radial, let's do a radial one. So it just drops in a radial filter, and we're just gonna bring this up and see if I like, like, let's see if that's enough. So it's just gonna soften the edges and I love that effect kind of towards this. It has that very much like a tilt shift look to it. And if you wanna strengthen it, just go to radial plus. The square ones, by the way, these use graduated filters. 
One quick note, there's a bug inside of Lightroom that does not allow us to create a resetting option for these, basically the, the local adjustments. So you can't reset a local adjustment with just a preset. There are ways of doing it, but it's convoluted and it doesn't, it's not clean basically. So what I would recommend is anytime you apply one of these, just if you want to remove it, reset it out manually by either clicking on the reset here under the, the radial or going into your graduated filters and then clicking the reset button under a graduated filter, okay? So for right now, let's click a radial plus. So this is gonna drop in two pins. And yes, do I want two or do I want one? I think I want just one. Let's go with just one and I'm just gonna grab that pin. I'm gonna pull it right up to our subjects. Beautiful, perfect, okay. And then I'm gonna put in a new little brush right here. If I wanted to, I could just pull the exposure down that one, but let's do that. And then let's switch this over to a negative 0.5. So now we're just gonna kind of burn everything else down and watch this. I have another brush in here. I don't know if I showed this to you yet. I might've actually showed it to you. It's the highlight bloom. So again, we have these highlights on the rocks, but they don't really jump right now. And what I wanna do is just kind of kick them up a little bit while leaving the shadows. And what this does is it just has this beautiful kind of enhancement to the image where it looks as if there's just kind of these more contrasty highlights, yet we kind of retain our shadows and everything. And look at this gorgeous image. I mean. It looks fantastic. It has still a, a very natural vibe to it. By the way, this is kind of the, the closest crop I would do with that vivid HDR because we want to make sure our skin tones don't go like too nuclear. On this kind of a image, it works. If it's too much, just go back to the, uh, the natural HDR instead of that one. All right, let's go over just one or two last little tools right here. I'm going to go and select this image. Actually, let's do this image right here. Okay. One little tool here that we built in as well is this desaturate tool. And uh, I actually got the suggestions from Matt Roberts. He's another one of my good friends. And what this does is a lot of times we have a hard time dialing in exposure when we have color and everything else to look at. And this is a perfect example of one of those images because when I look at this in color, it actually looks pretty well exposed. But when we look at it desaturated, we can see that it's a little bit on the dark side. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to desaturate and just adjust the exposure. So if you like doing this, if this is a part of your workflow, you can do this. And then what we'll do now is you can either resaturate at that point and bring it back into color, or you can just simply select one of the mixologies. And what I'll do is probably use glam color on this one. This one does pump up the highlights quite a bit, so we might need to adjust down just a little bit. But let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add my profile correction to remove that vignetting. I'm gonna just cool the image a little bit maybe just adjust down a tiny bit because that adds quite a bit of uh, brightness to that preset already. And look at this beautiful image right here. That glam color, I love the way that it just makes everything look so soft. And I really like would have nothing to do on this image if I wanted to just deliver this the way it was, I wouldn't need to do any retouching or anything. All right, I'm gonna show you guys one other thing. Let's do actually this image right here. This is gonna be our last little image that we're gonna work on. We have a whole number of ways that we could uh, work this image. I'm going to do a Portra 800. Let's say we want to go with a more filmic tone. So I'm going to drop that on there and I'm going to brighten it up quite a bit. I'm going to cool it down and add a little bit of pinks into it and just kind of get it to this nice neutral point. Now I love the way that this looks, but let's say that we wanted it. We have this little fade up here, but I want to turn that fade into a nice little sun flare. So I'm going to grab that sun flare. This time we're going to use a radial tool. I'm just going to kind of paint that in a little bit right up at that corner holding down alt or option, I'm just gonna subtract a little bit of that out of this so that we don't kind of cover the face too much. Maybe bring it in over here on the left side so we get a little bit of that light bleed coming across the frame. I'm even gonna go across the top side too. So let's shrink this down, go across the top. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of minus it out as I go. So I'm holding down alt or option. I'm using a relatively low flow. And I'm just kind of painting and removing it out until I have this nice kind of natural bleed into the image. And there we go. We have like a nice little Fuji 400 with sun flare. How wonderful. I'm going to get a little more pinks in this because it's got a lot of greens. I'm going to keep it on the, a little bit on the cooler side. That looks great. Okay. There's our images. All right. Last, last thing. Let's pick this little detail image right here. And again, it's all about your personal preferences. With this kind of stuff, you can start with a mixology. Let's say we start with uh, like vivid color, for example. And... Let's see it punch it up. And I love the way that that punches it up. I might go to signature colors so it's a little bit less kind of punchy. And that looks fantastic. But if you want more detail and definition, feel free to go into, like choose 
a mix a mixology to start with you can choose a mixology or a foundation to start with and then go into definition and feel free to harden it if you want that more kind of mid-tone contrast and add additional sharpening and do whatever you need to get to your final look again these are kind of based on our specific styles and our specific looks but we've made it very simple to modify that that's it for this video hopefully you all enjoyed this little primer into the new lightroom preset system let us know what you think we'll see you all in the next video Thank you.